What is up guys, Illinois Outdoorsman, and welcome to 2020. Um, good vision right there, 2020. Today, we're going to do a one year review. It's a year and one month I bought this, December of 18. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and do a review on it. A one year review, just kind of five pros, five cons, what I think I would like to change on it. And things I would change, things I like, you guys know what I mean, it's just a review, go over it. Some of the pros, cons, and yeah. Show off my boat a little bit, get ready for probably April. So we're four months early, but hey, who's counting? So we'll go ahead and dive on in. Yeah. All right, you guys, I have my list here. I wrote it all out so I didn't miss anything. Um, First, we'll start off with the cons, and then we will go ahead and we'll step into the good parts of this. We'll give you what I think is the bad parts, what I would change, and then we'll go from there. Um, starting out, first thing, that, let me put this down here so I quit taking it out. First thing I would change on this is actually the hull itself. Um, it's super, super soft. I put two sets of keel guards on here, and just on and off boat ramps, they destroyed the keel guards, gouged into the plastic, the back of the boat, I'll put a picture in there of what it looks like, where the hull actually kind of comes down and meets, is cut at a 45 where it's just been destroyed. The hull is super soft, so you have to pay attention. You can't just glide over the top of a stump or something like that, it's gonna tear it up. But for the abuse I put on it in a year, it's held up really well. I may end up having to go back and either add material to it and plastic weld it or come up with some different keel guards. But uh, overall, it's a good hull. It's just kind of the bow and the stern. It's just those two points of impact that are really kind of rough on it. Um, we're gonna go number two. As you guys can see, I have my seat modded. This, it's on angle iron. Right off the bat, you've got, you guys over here. I don't know how well you guys can see this with my PFD there. Are these little deals here are supposed to slide into a track down here so you can adjust the seat into, so you can adjust the seat position into three different positions. Um, it's really kind of a shysty thing. It's a quarter 20 bolt with a little plastic piece on it. And what ends up happening is you sit in it and it bends that bolt and then you can't get the seat out. You have to go in and physically cut it out with a grinder cut that bolt off without cutting into the boat. So right off the bat, I had to modify the seat, get it raised up, um, which don't get me wrong, it's super comfortable having it raised up. You, your legs aren't straight out, your legs don't fall asleep. It's easier to stand up. You get a better sight picture of what's going on around you and it doesn't really change the stability of the boat at all, being your center of gravity jumps up six inches. It doesn't change it that much at all. Um, so yeah, I mean, Bass Pro, if you guys are watching, or Tracker, uh, this is actually a Tracker boat, so if you guys do need parts for this boat, you have to go to Tracker, not Bass Pro. Go to your local Tracker dealership. They can get you parts for it, because it is actually made by Tracker. Um, but you guys are listening, make this raised up right off the bat. Bonafide and everybody else is already there, so just, let's catch up, guys. I mean, it's a great boat. I love this boat, don't get me wrong, but. We don't want to have to do this to our boat right off the bat before we put it on the water. As you guys can see, I can see my breath. It's like 30 degrees outside. Um, third con is the weight. Obviously, it's not a light boat. I think it's 87 pounds empty. That is with no gear in it, no seat. That's not counting the weight of the seat, which is like three pounds. But um, Overall weight, but it is something to expect with a 12-foot boat. This boat is the size of my John boat. And yeah for a big boat the weight's not horrible but you're gonna have to give somewhere if you want a boat this big you're gonna have to deal with the weight um the capacity on this is 350 pounds and i can tell you right now i have had well over 350 pounds um this past past year i think the closest i got to 300 pounds myself was two high 280s low 290s i was pushing that 300 pound mark plus all gear four rods 
my crate, everything else, camera gear, I was well over 350. And it didn't seem to bother it at all. I do think they underrate that. But the stability for its size, this is number four, guys. Sorry, I'm doing a horrible job. I'll, I'll do a better job at counting with the pros, I promise. Number four, the stability. This is, I have it in both pros and cons. There's pros and cons with stability. But for a boat this size, it is a little narrow for you, for me anyway to stand up in it. I have to have my feet pushed out all the way to the gunnels and it's find that medium and it's a little sketchy setting a hook in a fish just because it you go to set that hook, it does want to tip to that side. So you have to pay attention to what you're doing when you set the hook. So it does affect your hook set standing up. But it is nice that you can stand up in it because a whole day on the water sitting down, it, your butt hurts. You start getting sore, you want to get up. So you can actually stand up, fish a little bit, kind of get that blood flow back to your legs. Your legs aren't asleep the whole time. If your legs are asleep when you stand up, don't stand up. You're going in. Don't do it because you're not going to have that <clears throat> sensitivity to feel what your feet are doing until it's too late. Um, number five, I don't know why I was pointing down here. Number five, in the storage area where you guys are sitting, it would not be nice to either have that as an enclosed storage area like the Bonafide or like a dry storage almost, or have an extra set of scuppers in there because in mine, my center part where you actually sit and your feet sit, and in the front storage area, there's a crease with a, I'm gonna call it the passenger compartment, where it comes down like this and it traps water in there, and there's no way to get that water out without flipping the boat. I can't reach up there and pull a plug and let that water go and put the plug back in. It would be nice to have an extra set of scuppers. The back does have a set. There's actually a set right here behind the center hatch, a set under the seat, and a set in the back tank well. It'd be nice to have a set in the front tank well as well. Um, but outside of that, I know it's kind of just piddly crap outside of the material for the hole um, in the seat. Those are my two big ones that I would change, that would make the boat better straight from the factory. It's not something you gotta take home and modify, you know what I mean? <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah. I mean, they're not horrible things, but it's definitely a usable boat. Definitely a great boat to get into. So right now we're going to go into the top five pros of this boat. Pro number one would be the price. You guys, for a 12 foot fishing kayak, you cannot beat the price on it. I got mine on sale around, it was around Christmas time when I got it. I got it on sale originally like $6.99, which still isn't a horrible price. I paid $4.50 for it, brand new. Went and picked it up at Bass Pro. Um, they're online, I had to kind of argue with them about it because online it was $4.50, but in store it was still the $6.99 or whatever. No, you, here's how we're gonna do this. So what I ended up having to do was order it online for pickup in store. So they sent me one straight from St. Louis, or uh, Springfield, Missouri from their headquarters, from their main store, sent it up to East Peoria, which is my local Bass Pro for me to pick up. Instead of me being able to drive over to Bass Pro and pick one up, it's say ordering it and waiting three days, it saved me almost $300. Why, I don't know. But the price, even at $699 or whatever it was, $650, $699, something like that. You could, regularly find them on sale for five fifty, easy all day the price of this thing to get you out on the water in a stand-up fishing kayak an open fishing kayak is a great price yeah i mean what can you say we don't want to spend a ton of money i i would love to have a bona fide but i still can't see coming off fifteen hundred dollars for a bona fide i've got friends that have them and i promise you they're great boats yeah but i just i can't come off 1500 bucks right now to even see spending it on a kayak i would love it because then i could store my fishing rods inside of it but i'm not doing it um <clears throat> pro tip number two or i don't know it's not a tip pro number two of this is the stability i told you stability was going to be in here in two different ways um you can stand up in it it is a little shaky when you once you get used to it though, you can, you know what's, you know what you're doing. You can, yeah, you, you gotta learn the boat. 
learn the bow. But it tracks really well. I've seen reviews on these where people say they track horribly. They're like tanks in the water. They are a tank in the water. I promise you they are a tank in the water. If you stop paddling, that boat is stopping. Aerodynamically, yeah, probably not the greatest, but it works. It is, however, though you stop paddling, it's gonna keep going the way you were going until it stops. It does track extremely well when you're paddling. It doesn't wanna do this as you're going. Also, part of that comes with paddling technique, which you, everybody who's in a kayak should learn paddling technique. There's several different techniques. Um, I've gotten to the point now where I've kind of experimented paddling standing up with this and just paddling off of one side. And I can get this thing to go where I want it to go. And it's really nice and convenient. I do plan on, it does come with these cheap paddle holders in the side of it. Um, I do plan on, I usually only use the front one and I'll put the paddle in the front or back one, front one, I don't know. One of them and I'll lay the paddle in the well in the front. I do plan on having this raised up a little bit so I'm not bending all the way down to put that paddle back in there from a standing position. Um, but overall, it tracks extremely well for the size of the boat, the shape of the boat. The hull is kind of a almost like a tri hull, but it's not a tri hull. It's just got some curvature to it. Helps channel some of the water, but it's not the greatest. Um, Next up is this boat is a blank canvas when you buy it. When you buy one of these, if it's not used off of Facebook or Craigslist or something like that, if you buy it new from Bass Pro or new from Tracker, it is a blank canvas. There is, this one came with the seat which sat down. It does come with the scuffer plugs. You had the center hatch, two tank wells, and the built-in paddle holders. And it does also come with two flush mount rod holders. That was it. There is room on here. I have a camera mount on the front of the boat, the camera mount you guys are on. My depth finder, There's. it does come with two rails. I'm sorry, I forgot those two rails. As you guys can see, I have a rod holder here. A um, couple eye bolts stuck in where you can put a duck blind on this boat. Those are the attachment points. A cup holder right here. Right now it's got my apple juice in it. Um, I do have two uh, Yak Attack, I think they're six inch tracks put back there. I do have another one to put in here, which I planned on kind of changing my depth finder setup so I can move it a little bit and kind of raise it up. Um, but it is a blank canvas for sure. You guys can use your imagination to customize it how you want. Customize it to what's going to work for you. Um, comfort. After you do this seat mod. Some people may like sitting down flat on the floor and to each their own, just keep in mind these little bolts back here will get bent and your seat's gonna be stuck in there. So just keep that in mind. Um, but overall, it is super comfortable. I can sit in this seat, have a little bit of a bend in my leg or I can straighten my legs all the way out if need be. And I have the room. It's not like I'm crammed instantly. So I can relax, I can sit down in the boat. I can enjoy my time on the water and not feel like I'm clustered up and just cramped in there. Um, I mean, comfort's comfort. Everybody's going to have a different opinion. Obviously, these are my opinions. If you guys think of something else or you own an Ascend and you think of something else, drop it in the comments down below. Um, now, my fifth and final pro for this boat is... The storage. There is a decent amount of storage in this boat. At one time, I ran all my tackle in the center hatch. I decided when I put this depth finder in, I gotta put the battery somewhere. I was gonna slide it under the seat. It's now in the hatch to keep it all kind of centrally located, I guess. Tackle's in a crate. There's a huge tank well up here, which I never use. I It's got a rope tied to the handle, tied off to the dock. Um, a lot of times I'll throw my bump board up there or it's under the seat. The uh, center hatch has storage from the, where the front tank well and the passenger compartment meet to right about the cup holder in here, which is giant. You can hold like a 64 ounce Gatorade in there. It's freaking huge, um, but it's full width of the boat. There's a fair, in, fair amount of internal storage. You have your little dry bag, which I do not recommend you put your phone or anything else in. Um, but you end up with 
this little cup that can go in there. If you take that cup out, you can almost have another storage compartment in there. It's open on the side, so whatever you do put in can end up in the back of the boat. Um, under the seat, if you do the seat mod, you end up with a lot of storage. You can put a drawer in there if you wanted to. I'm sure we might actually end up making a drawer on this channel just to do it, to see if it's done, if it can be done and how it'll work. Um, you get to the back, there's a double tank well, I guess I'll show you guys. I would call it a double tank well. It is actually, this well holds my crate, and then you have this part here with bungees, both front, front, and rear tank wells have bungees in there for storage. These are these tracks I was talking about, you guys, these Yak Attack tracks. I did kind of stick with the boat out as well, so we do have some stickers in the boat. But those are my pros and cons of the Ascend 12T. Overall, I love it. You can get the 128T, which is like eight inches longer and a little, like an inch and a half wider. It's honestly, I wouldn't do it for the extra money. You get the swivel seat where you can spend 360 on it. I'm not going to spend the extra money for a swivel seat in eight inches. Um, so yeah, overall, you guys, it is a horrible camera job. Two weeks off and a horrible camera job. Overall, it is a decent boat. It's a decent starter boat, and it's really a... I'm going to set you guys down because I'm screwing this camera all up. Overall, it is a super decent boat to get started, to get out on the water. It's one that I will keep for a couple of years before I do end up upgrading to something else. Um, I will definitely wear this boat out. It'll probably be when it starts leaking and I start having to constantly fix the hull that I get rid of it. Um, but overall, super nice boat, you guys. I enjoy it. I know you guys who watch this channel enjoy the fishing content I put out, which is 98% of it is out of this boat. Um, it's had the musky laid in the front of it, that big bass in here. It did not have the alligator in here. I didn't take the boat for that. Um, but yeah, overall, you guys, it is a great boat. And I would highly recommend it to anybody who is either just getting into kayak fishing or has been into kayak fishing for a while and is just looking for a new boat. It's a great way, great place to start, and Tracker has done a pretty decent job on this boat, plus or minus a couple things. Yeah, um, make sure you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you aren't already, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at IL underscore Outdoorsman. Um, yeah, just make sure you guys stay tuned. Turn on that little bell too, so you guys get notified when I upload a new video. And until next time, I'll see you guys out there.